sir. You ready? Target. Target. Good boy. Alden is our seven-year-old Amher Tiger. He was born here at the Bronx Zoo. Down. Good boy. He's a good cat. Up. Oh. Alden. Up. Oh. That's not what I asked for. Up. Oh. He can be funny and silly and goofy sometimes. Oh, go get it, Alden. <laughs> Is that it? And of course, he's just incredibly handsome. Our amber tigers are the largest subspecies of tiger, and they are the biggest of the large cats. They are endangered in the wild. Around the 1940s, there are about 50 amber tigers in the wild, and right now, there are around 400 or 500. But despite that increase in their numbers, they're still endangered. You roll. Roll. Good boy. So training's really important here. Sit. We want to keep them interacting with their environment, with us. Good boy. Another really important reason is that it helps us um, to make sure that they're doing okay. So if there was something wrong with them, we can get a good look at their body, make sure that they're safe and happy and healthy. King over. Good boy, that was a good over. So smart. Are you guys ready to go out? All right, come on, girls. All right, have a good day, Ronnie. The two grizzly bears we have here at the Central Park Zoo, Betty and Veronica, they were both rescued as young cubs. They had not been taught how to survive in the wild on their own. They miss the important lessons on how to find food, how to behave like a bear, how to defend themselves, so they would not have survived in the wild. So they got a new life by being rescued by the Bronx Zoo, and they lived at the Bronx Zoo for many, many years before they came here to the Central Park Zoo. Do you see it? What is it doing? It's resting. Ronnie Bear, we think, is about 28. That's pretty old for a bear. She has this significant wound on one of her feet. Since the issues with this foot have not gotten better over several, several weeks now, despite some treatments, the veterinarians recommend that we do an immobilization, do a full workup on her, get some samples. Certainly an immobilization is scary in itself for an older bear, but we need to find out what's going on in order to make her feel better. Plan A actually was working, but that rope just broke. We always come up with a plan uh, for capturing crocodiles. Usually you have to have a few backup plans because the animals are not, they don't get the plan. Plan B. OK, they're going to go from the other side. I'll need another person to help me over here. We're going to put the cable first, then we're going to run the rope down this pole okay. to get around on our neck, and then we're going to pass the rope through. Cuban crocodiles can be certainly very dangerous. They're very mobile. They're known for their uh, ability to gallop and to jump. They're, they are fearless animals. No, come on, come back through. Because that does mean you have to be pretty careful around them, because they're not just going to run away from you. They will bring the fight to you if given the chance. I need you to help me with this. Yeah. Kev, you want us to goose her more toward you? If you from the can, other? if someone can poke her tail. Yeah. Yep, that side. Pull lobby. OK, we got a noose on her. And we got one leg. You bet it. You're going to right, I'm going to try to get the rope over to you there, Sam. Those tongs. <clears throat> there you go. Yep. All right, we need that mouth pull. We need another uh, pull just as, as a block. Back Come on, on this side, side with the pole, Sam. Someone else should be blocking that door, or it should be closed. There we go. If she runs at you, run run backwards. Yes, sir. <laughs> there you go. That's good. Jaws are secured. All right. She's not safe nice job, yet. Good job, guys. <laughs> OK. All right. When we jump, we're not landing flat on the crocodile. We're landing on either side of the crocodile, so we're not putting our full force on the on the back of the crocodile. All right. <laughs> All right. It went pretty well. Once you had a good rope on her and they were able to pull her up to the opening, it was pretty good from there.
Here comes Taqiq. Let's go, Keek. Taqiq's the best hunter. That's Kaluk on the right. There he goes. Chinook's checking everything out. I think she knows she's going in. There we go. <laughs> when the fish come out, the polar bears do exhibit their natural hunting ability, which is pretty amazing that we don't get to see all the time. Come on, Chinook. They're specialized to hunt seals. Their claws help them grip the sea ice. They have specialized canines and molars that help them tear seals apart. They're incredibly strong. Now she sees them. There we go. Come on, girl. Kalik just knocked his bone in. <laughs> he cares more about the bone than the fish. <laughs> He's got to get it in first. Come on, Kalik. There we go. Come on, Kalik. Oh. oh. <laughs> the bears each have a unique style of hunting. Kalik try to push the fish up against the glass in a corner. Chinook, she tends to force him to the shallow end and try to capture him. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Missed it. <laughs> Providing fish does allow the polar bears to get a lot more exercise. It should be stimulating cognitively and physically. And it also builds muscle mass. We want our animals to thrive and not just survive. Oh, oh! <laughs> yeah. yeah, Kaluk is yeah, the winner. Boy. Kaluk wins. Yeah. What a good boy. Now we're headed to the health center to grab the male king cobra and bring him back to exhibit in the reptile house. All animals coming into the collection here at the zoo do have to go through quarantine, and that's just standard procedure to ensure the health and safety of the existing animals here at the zoo. This animal originally came from a private individual in Florida, so we're just being a little extra careful with it. And now we're going to be moving it on exhibit. Everything went well in quarantine. We'll certainly try to have him come out of the cage and go directly into the bag. We brought a few tools with us, snake hooks, and then we have a snake bagger. The bag is specifically designed for catching long snakes. All right, big guy, want to come out? King cobras are extremely fast. They can strike a very far distance. King cobras don't want to go out of their way to bite anyone. It's just if you are you know, encroaching on their space, then they become potentially very dangerous. That is a big snake. That is a big snake. The new male is much more aggressive, much stronger. He has a lot of fire, too. If they were to bite you, eventually the venom shuts down your ability to breathe, but destroys tissue. There's a lot of bad things that go along with this venom. Oh, that's an impressive snake. <laughs> this animal is new here, so he's still a little skittish. The problem with him is just that he's a big snake. He's over 12 feet, so there's not a lot of safe area to actually work with the snake. Everywhere you go, he can kind of cut you off. OK. If we can get a little more space and try to actually get him out onto the floor, we might have a better shot. So the way the room was oriented, there just was no room to actually move around. So the snake in one, one charge can kind of cut off all your exits. So we're going to try to turn the cage sideways. This will give us a chance to hopefully get him like out onto the floor where we can move around a little bit. We're going to grind this out. All right, ready to try again? Yep. This does feel better already. Round two. This snake is just being more defensive. It doesn't want us really messing with him. When they charge, they charge fast. That's good. We might just need to take this cage down to the floor. You got that? All right, then maybe he'll come out. We can still do that same technique. Just be ready for the charge. You got tail? Yeah. That's what we want. That's what we want. Keep going for it. Up, up, if you can. Twist. Good. Good. Oh, watch him, watch him, watch him. Oh, his tail? I think it's just his tail. Or is that his tail? Watch his head, that's his head. Drop it. Just do it again. You ready? Yep. Up. Twist. 
There we go. Oh, hang on, hang on. All right. That, you got him. Hopefully the uh, release will be less exciting. <laughs> How many kids in there? Two. Okay. Come on. Come on, kids. Come on. Come on, Mazzani. Lincoln, let's go. He's like, I'm not leaving my daddy. Come on, Mazzani. Good boy. They get very quiet, and they know something's going on. All we could do is reunite them as quickly as possible. You know there's two darts on that thing, right? Because of the heart. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> what we've learned from taking care of gorillas for decades is they have a history of cardiac disease, especially as they get older. We can't really say why it's occurring, but every time we immobilize, we will do a cardiac exam. But we did measure him at 502 pounds. They're very, very strong. The muscle mass is amazing. He's going to be. He's not going to be happy. He's going to be he's upset. Just... There's lots of possibilities for things not to go the way you want them to go, but we're hoping that that's not going to be an issue. So, ready? intelligent animals. They know what's happening in a situation. We wish we could explain it to them that these procedures that may not be comfortable for you right now are going to have a great outcome for you. Need some distraction. We've got him pretty sedate. He's uh, unresponsive to what's going on, um, but he's still a little bit too touchy. Be careful still, guys. I think we're probably just about ready here. One, two, three. Lightweight. Watch, watch that door. Uh. Let's give him a minute just to settle.